welcome back to my channel. So uh, just to clear the air here, I just want to say I'm missing two nails. I know. This one, and I'm not going to flip you guys off. This one. <laughs> one of them broke a couple days ago, and one of them broke today. So I have not had a chance to repair them yet. I'm just going to remove all of my nails. But anyways, welcome back to my channel. Today, I thought that I would share a quick tip for you because there is a big misconception in the beauty community and I wanted to clear the air. Today I'm going to be talking about setting powders versus finishing powders because it seems that even a lot of like big beauty bloggers, like I've been watching um, several big beauty bloggers and people that are very knowledgeable in the beauty community about products and how they're formulated and how they're supposed to be used and all this kind of stuff. They don't know the difference at least i've never heard them talk about it or anything like that and i have looked you know like i mean there may be videos like this out there on it that i have not seen but i've seen a lot of big beauty bloggers bash certain powders because they're using them incorrectly so I wanted to, and this is totally not to bash them, you know, if you don't know how to use a product or you don't know what it's supposed to be used for or how it's supposed to be used, you just don't know, you know. This is also a video to kind of say how important it is to read the how to use on any products that you get. Always, always, whether it's skincare, whether it's makeup, whether it's body products or anything like that, always read how to use them because they're all meant to do different things. So a setting powder is exactly how it sounds. It is designed to set the makeup. A lot of times setting powders have a little bit of a tint to them, like my Laura Mercier Loose Translucent Setting Powder or the Cover Effects. Sorry, that has my name on it. <laughs> the Cover Effects Perfect Setting Powder. Both of these have a little bit of a tint to them. The Laura Mercier Loose Translucent Setting Powder comes in two shades. This one is light to medium and then they have a medium to deep shade and then the perfect setting powder by cover effects comes in three different shades there's a light a medium and a dark so with setting powders those are the kind of powders that you see everyone set their makeup with or that they should be setting their makeup with because like all the baking techniques and everything like that that's meant to lock your makeup in place that's what you use a setting powder for so whenever you're looking to add longevity to your makeup up and you're looking to bake or you're looking just to kind of press some powder into your skin to lock your makeup in place that's what you want to use a setting powder for now setting powders can be used very very generously if they're formulated correctly they should not cause flashback or anything like that unless you're using an absurd amount of them you know what i'm saying like if i put this whole thing on my face <laughs> obviously it's gonna cause flashback or something but i can i can seriously put a lot of powder a lot of this powder on my face and it will still not cause flashback if a setting powder is formulated correctly it shouldn't cause flashback it shouldn't disrupt your makeup at all in fact it should blur fine lines and wrinkles and hold your makeup in place without disturbing the appearance of it. So whenever I use a setting powder, which I use the Loose Translucent Setting Powder from Laura Mercier on a daily basis, I will take that with my Laura Mercier Powder Puff and I just fold that powder puff in half like this and I pick up that setting powder, tap off the excess and then press it onto my under eyes, pick up a little bit more, press it onto my nose area and bring it up onto my forehead a little bit and then pick up a tiny bit more dust off that excess and press it into my chin I don't take an absurd excess amount like whenever you see it under my eyes there are very few times where you can actually see it under my eyes you know what I'm saying how whenever you see beauty bloggers or makeup artists like pack all that excess under their eyes that's fine the technique still works that way but all you're doing whenever you're using that much powder is you're wasting product and you're spending more money and it's just it's not necessary you know what I'm saying so you can still do the same thing with your setting powders you just don't have to press that much powder into your face you shouldn't see that white cast under your eyes after you've pressed your powder in because it's just not necessary now with that said 
that technique specifically came from drag and theater makeup because drag and theater makeup, they are putting so much makeup and so much product on their face to enhance their features, to make their eyes look bigger because they're on stage or to transform themselves from masculine to feminine. You know what I'm saying? So with that, they're putting so much makeup on their face that they have to pack that powder on and let it sit and really sink all the way through into their makeup because they're putting so much on. Now, even with the amount of product that big time beauty bloggers will put on their face, even the amount of product that I put on my face sometimes, yes, you wanna press powder into it, but there's really no need to put that much powder to where it's causing that white cast under your face. And you know, like you see all those thumbnails of the videos where it's like how to highlight and contour and there's like white powder under their eyes. It's not necessary. You know, I know that they wear a lot of makeup. I know that, but still that amount of powder is not necessary and you're just wasting product. So don't feel like you have to do that. Don't waste your money. So you can still take powder and pick it up and I still take a generous amount and I pick it up on my... I'm going blank. I pick it up on my powder puff and I still pick up an excess amount and I press it under my eyes, but I'm not getting that white cast under my eyes. Now, sometimes I will put a little bit of extra if I need to do my concealer before I do my eye makeup for some reason. I'll put a little bit of extra powder under my eyes to catch the fallout because it allows me to just dust it away. But on a regular basis, it's not necessary. So quick tip with setting powders. Now let's get into finishing powders because finishing powders are very different. Now I have here a little tiny guy. This is the Bye Bye Pores Finishing Powder. Whenever you go on Sephora.com and you type in setting powders and you click on the Laura Mercier setting powder, for example, the Cover FX Perfect setting powder, the Kat Von D setting powder, all those that are called setting powders, they all say you can bake with them, press it into your makeup, you know? But if you, I'll get my thoughts straight here. But if you go and you type in finishing powders on sephora.com, you will see that as you click on each finishing powder, Makeup Forever Ultra HD finishing powder, for example, that one got a really bad rap by several big beauty bloggers because it caused flashback. But the fact of the matter is they were using it like a setting powder, but it's a finishing powder. And a finishing powder is only meant to be used very, very sparingly. So a finishing powder is meant to be dusted on very, very lightly at the very end of your makeup, even after you've done your setting powder and everything, because all it's gonna do is it's gonna blur fine lines and it's gonna give you a smoother appearance, if that makes sense. The It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores finishing powder, for example, if you go and click on that one, it will say use sparingly, use sparingly, use a small amount, a small amount. Before I did this video, I was doing my research and I went and I typed in finishing powders and I would click on each one and it would say use sparingly, use a small amount. Sorry, my, my cat. They are meant to just be dusted a little tiny bit at a time. So you would literally with a... With a finishing powder, you would just want to take like maybe a small fluffy brush like this guy. I would just take a small amount like this, kind of dip my brush in there, tap off all that excess, and that little tiny amount right there, you just want to take and dust very, very lightly all over the face. Just really, really taking that small amount of product and spreading it to blur those fine lines and wrinkles. You can put it under your eyes. So like you may notice the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder that's meant to go under the eyes. That one, you would just wanna take a small amount of because that one's meant to blur the fine lines and wrinkles. And that's why it has that white color to it because it's gonna give the illusion of a smoother appearance. So. With all that said, I just kind of wanted to bring that misconception to light because there are so many people that are going and buying like the Makeup Forever Ultra HD finishing powder, for example. They're buying that powder and they're using it as a setting powder and then they're saying, this powder sucks, it has so much flashback. And it's like, that's because you're using it wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to clear the air there. If you are looking for something that will set 
your makeup and keep it locked in place all day, you want to go for a setting powder. If you want something that you can put on top of your setting powder to blur fine lines and wrinkles, or if you have really dry skin and you don't want to put any powder on your face, but you just kind of want to smooth everything out a little bit, and you're willing to just use a tiny amount of powder, then go for a finishing powder. Finishing powders and setting powders are really meant to be used in conjunction with each other. So you would do a setting powder first and then a finishing powder at the very end. Great for photography, great for like weddings and stuff like that, just to give that little bit of additional smoothness and yeah. So that's about it, you guys. I just wanted to jump on here and do a quick little, a quick tip quick tip Friday it is. I hope that this helped you guys kind of in your makeup life. I hope that you learned something new, whether you're an artist or just an everyday makeup consumer. I hope that this kind of taught you something, I guess. I'm losing my train of thought. I'm gonna go ahead and close out this video. Let me know if this helped you out or if you already knew the difference between a setting powder and a finishing powder, or if you didn't, let me know. And maybe I can do more videos like this with quick little tips. And yeah, so that is that. Let me know what videos you would like to see next in the comments below. I love it when you guys give me suggestions. I've been getting so many recently and I'm so excited to start working on them. So thank you all so much for watching. If you aren't subscribed already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you stay up to date on all my videos and all my craziness and so that you can, you know, see my cats every once in a while. And if you really like my videos, then go ahead and hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload. I know that there have been some issues with notifications, so hit it until it tells you that you will be notified whenever I upload. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you all in Monday's tutorial. Bye! <laughs>